I was being transported from a secret location to testify against the Mexican Mafia Godfather. Not only was I labeled a rat for turning on my brothers, I was to be executed by any Southern gang member that had the opportunity. The same Sudanios I once held dominion over. Mundo, you ready for this? Testifying against Joe is a big deal. At this point, it is what it is. Let's go. Let's go. Mundo, why don't you take a seat? We have to keep you gaffled up for the benefit of Joe's attorney. Have a seat. Okay, Mundo. I'm the district attorney in charge of prosecuting the Joe Morgan case. And before the defense attorney gets here, I wanted to ask you a couple of questions. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Yeah. Before I ask those questions, there's something that's really baffling me. Why would a hardcore Mexican mafia member such as yourself roll on one of his brothers? I made a vow to God that I would do anything to stop the darkness. Okay, so why don't you tell me about Joe Morgan? What kind of guy was he? He's one of the most charismatic, witty, and outgoing person I've ever met. And at the same time, he can be the most evil, deadly, and calculated killer. I know, because I was the same way. Okay, so you say that you were the same way, calculated killer. Did you and Joe ever discuss killing a prosecutor or any law enforcement officers? That hey, man doesn't target cops, DAs, or law enforcement. It's bad for business and generates too much heat. We also don't attack innocent people, women, children, the elderly, only cowards do that. And if there's one thing that him means not, it's cowards. Mr. Mendoza, as you probably know, I'm representing Mr. Joe Morgan. Do you believe that my client has placed you in this so-called hit list? I know he has. Okay. Are you concerned or have you heard anything about your family being placed on this phantom list? Ms. Mendoza. Mr. Mendoza, answer the question. So... How did I go from a highly respected member of the Mexican Mafia to an undercover informant? Like all of us, my journey began before I was born. To understand my culture, mi raza, one must first understand our history. After the great battles of the Mexican-American War, the Guadalupe Hidalgo Treaty was signed in 1848. The United States acquired territory in Texas, Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, Utah, Nevada, and California. 200,000 Mexicans became American citizens overnight, de volada. But the struggle for acceptance continued. In the early 1900s, Pancho Villa emerged a hero to some and a villain to others, but a warrior to all. In the 1920s, millions of Mexicans crossed the Rio Grande searching for a better life including my parents. Gangs also migrated north to El Paso, where the Pachuco was born. Many continued to Los Angeles and other cities where the first gangs in the Southwest were formed. World War II displayed the bravery of Mexican-Americans across the globe. At about the same time, Pachucos began wearing zoot suits in attempts to differentiate themselves. I was born in 1949, 
ushering in the decade in which 3,800 Mexican Americans were forced from their homes in Chavez Ravine to build Dodger Stadium. Most left peacefully, except in the decision of eminent domain. But a few refused to leave and were arrested and dragged from their porches while bulldozers immediately flattened their homes. The 1950s also brought a new gang, a gang of elites, a gang that only accepted the most vicious of all gang members. Bueno Buff Flores from Hawaiian Gardens launched his idea at Duell Vocation Institute, and it was born. A gang where all members are equal and have equal say. A gang that will have supremacy over all other gangs. The Mexican Mafia. La M. This is where my story begins. In 1959, my dad took me to my very first baseball game where I saw the great Willie Mays. After the game, we stopped by my Tio Mundo's house. He loved to tell stories about fighting alongside the legendary Pancho Villa. I wish that day would have never ended. And then they hit us from everywhere. Mexican Barrales? No, Apache Indians. We fought bandidos. We fought Federales. We even fought the American troops when they came looking for Villa. But the best were the Apache. Pancho Villa, he ran out of bullets. I only had a few left. Apache, who were still alive, they rode away. On that day, we killed 35, and we lost two Dorados. I, I wish I could go back to those days. My father had a mean streak when tequila quenched his thirst. Look at me! Usually my mother suffered his wrath, but sometimes it was us. His withering. It was truly magnificent and one of the most painful images of my life. Sit! Can't take this no more! You're not gonna hurt us no more! I'm done! Get out! Just get out! Orale! Listen up, homeboys. Today is the day. These are the barrio rules. No kicking, no weapons. Suzy, give me the ring. Damn. Ramon, your keys, your wallet, whatever you don't want to lose. You ready? Cut. <laughs> Welcome to Barrio Nuevo. Mundo. What's up? Let me see. Check this out. I know that look. I see pain in your eyes, youngster. You don't know me, Vato. Yeah, but I know the one who knows pain and suffering. He took on all the pain and all the suffering of everybody in the world. I'm gonna tell you right now, he can take that pain away. And what he requires of you to do is to repent of your sins and put trust in him so he can take that pain away. And you'll know somewhat of joy, great joy, at first. Yeah, let's get away from this Hey, crazy. listen, Isaiah 53, he understands pain. The street preacher was getting to me. Luckily, my homeboy pulled me away. Visiting a fan in White Fence territory was a fatal mistake.
their mistake was letting me live. Hey, Mundo, what happened, homie? Who did this? White fence. We were more than ready to roll. The machete made me feel like an Aztec warrior awaiting battle. I could already taste the blood that satiated my hunger for revenge. Mundo, this is for white fence when they come looking for us. Why wait? I went hunting that night and earned the nickname Machine Gun Mundo. Orale, pass the toll, brother. <laughs> Crazy Mundo. It's all over LA how you took that bottle's head off. Hey, they kicked it off. We just finished the job. <sighs> Tony the war hero. What's up, man? So what war? You fighting. Oh yeah? Take me to Vietnam. Got a nine? I bleed red, white, and blue just like you. student and altar boy to a street thug adopting the swagger necessary for respect and acceptance. My life would never be the same. In many ways, I was a product of the 60s. The assassination of John Kennedy, his brother Robert, and Martin Luther King shook the nation. The Vietnam War divided America, and the psychopathic cult leader Charles Manson and his followers ripped away our country's last fabric of innocence when they mutilated unborn children. I guess it was fitting I was that close to evil. Holy. Hey, check it out, Mundo. It's that bottle of Charles Manson. It's that punk that killed Sharon Tate. Keep walking, Blue. Mr. Mendoza, I'm Lieutenant Duncan, and I've been assigned by the warden to find an institution that suits you. But first, congratulations, you passed a high school equivalency of 96%. If you stay out of trouble, you may be able to go to college someday. However, I'm very concerned about you. You need help, young man. Oh, yeah? You know who needs help? Your mother. And I'm just the guy to help you. Stevenson Junior High, right? Bugsy? Where are you from, Mesa? Mundo, Barrio Nuevo. Bugsy, King Cobras. All right, all right. Hey, so check this out, brother. As I was pulling the other bottles on the movida on the inside, you see those dudes over there? The negros hang with their kind, the white dudes stick with their people, and the Chicanos, we stick with our own raza. You understand this? Where's Dad? He had to work, mijo. This came for you. Thank God you're in jail, not in Vietnam. 
At least this way you're alive. The real warriors were fighting in Vietnam. It hit me hard when I realized I could not be standing with them serving my country. It was too late. Okay, our next case is Ramon Mendoza, also known as Mundo. He's a violent young man with an IQ in the 140s. Sometimes the smart ones just don't know how to use their intellect. Let's go. Mr. Mendoza, I understand that your nickname is Machine Gun Mundo. It's just something they call me on the streets, and it's stuck. You've been in four fights. All of them appear to be racially motivated. I have a special request. Go ahead, the floor is yours. I'd like to be transferred to San Quentin. My misguided pride bought me a ticket on the Grey Goose, headed to the big house at San Quentin. I got what I wanted, the opportunity to perform like the legends I'd heard so much about. Men like Big Pancho, who fought off a cell extraction for 10 minutes. Pancho and the Union Sergeant shook hands the next day, both conceding it was all in a day's work. Colorado stepped over the mortally wounded BGF member shot by a guard on the handball court and finished his shot. Peg Leg Joe Morgan from Fort Maravilla was one of the best handball players in the prison system despite a prosthetic leg. Acha was the best chess player in the system. He also stabbed an inmate to death at the Folsom Prison Chapel while the choir sang Rock of Ages. David O.C. continued his attack on a BGF member despite being warned and then shot by a guard. Cheyenne from Bakersville, a highly respected killer, attempted to unite all Mexican gangs, including the rival prison gang, Nuestra Familia. My name is Sergeant Smith. You have been assigned to San Quentin because you have been convicted of a crime. It is not my job to display my personal feelings with regard to the nature of your crime. It is my job to enforce the rules of this prison, and it is your job to follow them. You will be treated with respect, and I expect each of you to treat my officers with respect. You love me. The loneliness and despair are routine, but the worst is the pure monotony and boredom of prison life. Killing time is a primary objective. I made it a point to be placed in isolation most of the time, which gave me the solitude necessary to harden my heart. I was younger than the grown convicts who surrounded me, but what I lacked in maturity I made up with ferociousness and purpose. Every year, Johnny Cash would give us a concert, a refreshing break from the monotony of prison life. Johnny played fulsome prison blues too many years in a row for Acha's liking. Already in a bad mood that day, he threw a spoon at Johnny, hitting him on the forehead. Johnny Cash never missed a beat and finished his set. Being state-raised, I was schooled on methods of destruction. I practiced prison warfare and hand-to-hand -hand combat every chance I got, hardening my hands and perfecting my strikes. I began making a name for myself, taking the lives of two NF members, Cisco from Fresno and Paul from Stockton, as well as Arthur and Cerebo from the Black Gorilla family. It's the big day. I know you're ready. Always ready, yes, sir. Orale, the last boat just came in from Oso. Canales are all good with you being made. If you say no, 
We're all good. Life goes on. You say yes. There's no turning back. You're an immigrant brother, carnal for life. Amen, I say. Por vida. Orale. Say no game. Say no club or biker game. You feel me, Holmes? I understand, carnal. Amen. Orale, mundo. From this day forward, consider yourself a immigrant brother, carnal. Gracias. Orale. Watch out for Sergeant Hankins. Always watching out for body language. Go meet your canales. Gracias. Rale. Big Mike gave me the news I had been dreaming of for so many years. I only met the Vato once. He was on a transport layover on the way to Chino. But it was enough time to understand why Cheyenne commanded so much respect. But at least shy. Don't you find the coupon to say? See you soon. Mendoza, you've been selected to be enrolled in the Lister program. It's a surgery to remove the front part of the brain that controls the violence. It's a government-funded program. Now why would I give you the best part of me? Because you're the perfect candidate. By the way, we're going to ship you out tomorrow. Make the best of it. Counselor. I'll see you soon. Wish you the best, ma'am. If the good work or not. Welcome to the Frankenstein Factory, I say. Mr. Mendoza, have a seat, please. They tell me you're a chess player. Is there anything you don't know about us? I appreciate you volunteering for my program. Volunteering? Is that what you call it? If I remember, I didn't have a choice. Nevertheless, the Lister program will benefit you. Mundo, don't you want to live a normal life? You think sitting here, playing chess, trying to get in my head, in your little comfy chair, is that normal? Normal, Mr. Mendoza would be not killing people. High-level prison officials have just confirmed termination of the controversial Lister program. You may recall that partial lobotomies were to be performed on most violent inmates in the prison system. Although officials insist participation is completely voluntary, protests and legal action have led to permanent shutdown of this medical procedure. Rachel Roberts reporting. Back to you, John. Mundo, congratulations on keeping your brain. I only need half a minute anyways, I said, to do it for never let in here. You hear what happened today? You already know we started hitting the NF a few months ago. Sleepy and Pelon killed two at Susanville, and Cato and Barry Mills from the AB hit some in Tracy. Baby boy killed another one in Tracy Tamien. They're going down like flies in all the pintas. That's the good news, carnal. The bad news is, Cheyenne got hit in Chino. What? 
no carnal, he's dead. They shanked him like 70 times and then threw him off the tier at Palm Hall. Woodsy from the NF has been disrespecting Cheyenne, mocking his memory like a schoolboy on a playground. Let's see here. I heard a lot about you, I said. <laughs> For the last words about you as a kid, man. They're all true, I said. Wow, except me, you're right, I said. It's good, it's good. Vivi por vida. Por vida. Welcome, Karna. Sailor was also from Vienna, one of my own. We would become close friends. Mail call. Last day in isolation. And you get mail. Somebody must love you, Mendoza. A lot of people love me, you see. Man, that's good stuff. Can a convict get a whiff of that? If this was another Ruka, this is from me consentida. Michelle. Come on, bro. I might be busted and disgusted, but I can't be trusted. This one is for me, and only me. Simon. How does an inmate suspected of a half a dozen prison murders qualify for a parole date? Well, the law is the law, and if those things can't be proven, you've got to go by the guidelines. Ah, bring him in. According to your file, you were committed out of Los Angeles County on involuntary manslaughter conviction. You arrested in May in 1969. You served about five years and then about another six months county time. According to new guidelines, you are to be released upon approval of parole plans. You should be free or out in about 30 days. Can you handle parole? Yes, I can. Tell me how. I'm a changed individual. Let me just. You'll be telling my sister you'll be on Broadway next week. Am I right? Something like that, Anna. Hey, um, I appreciate you allowing me to write your Carnala. I respect her like no one else. The walls have ears, Carnala. Cyclona. Hey, baby girl. Mundo here. I made it to Broadway. How's Bakersfield? Good, good. 
Hey, you know a bottle from Bakersfield named Woodsy, you know? Yeah. Do me a favor. Put out all your fillers with your people. Do whatever it takes to find this vato. Yeah. And I'll be in touch real soon. Gracias, mia. Mucho amor. Bye. God, Michelle, you look like an angel, Mia. It's just like I pictured you. I don't know, sending you photos of someone else. The way I see it, Karna, we don't need to be held down by dead weight. The Karnales who are slamming the prophets into their arms, they need a way, Joe. That's what's been holding me from tapping into Chul. He's the head of the Alapo family in Mexico. We burn him, he just stops supplying us. We lose a solid contact. Understand? Okay, let's agree right now. You, me, and Sailor will connect with our runners. And Sailor and I will drive up north. We have brothers in Frisco and Hayward, and Emmett Carnales in Fresno, Vaselia, and Bakersfield. Okay. We'll get a sample from Chewy. All that really needs about an ounce. Me and Sailor will supply the Garnas with the sample and we'll slang it 500 an ounce. And quality never changes without notification. First order will be on consignment and then they prepay from then on. You make it work? I mean. We'll make it work, Joe. I also have an idea for our own backyard in LA. Tell Sailor and I will get a team together and we'll go to everyone slanging in the bottles and we'll read them the name and gospel. And what's that? They either push our dope or we take them out right there. Once word gets out, the wall fall in line once they see the kukui coming. I love it, Karnas. 
Let's start spreading the Emmy gospel. Simon, Simon. <laughs> Cash, yes, sir. Let's turn it around anything. It's all beans. Tell me, where's the clavo? Tell me, where is it? Where is it? I don't have anything. Hey, Mundo. Check this out. He held out for this. Trading death for a pedazo didn't make sense to me. Let's go. Alfie, let's go. I'm tired of driving. I'm about to get all the action. I want to be the pistolero. You serious, this sin? Sailor. I think he's serious. All right. Next time you pull the trigger. Now move, Menso. That's what I'm talking about. This is man. Should have opened the door. Maybe I should have said uno, dos, tres. <laughs> we wiped the streets of anyone that dared to challenge us, defy us, lie to us, or get high on his own supply. Word spread quickly and the neighborhood stepped back in line and accepted their role as soldiers for La Emme. You know who I am? From now on, you get your dough from me and only me. You good with that? Everybody slanging in this neighborhood is supplied by me and only me. And then this. Come on. Go tell your homeboys that we're in charge.
They're not a good short up here, is there? You got a lot of guts inviting me. You can have a problem with the drugs. That's what the big homies want. Yeah. That's what the big homies want. From now on, anybody's thinking dope, they report to Mundo. Every one of you that are slanging in this barrio, from now on, you report to Shiloh. Shiloh reports to me. And then this. I'll be in touch, yes. Vale. Are you sure you want to be with me? This business of yours seems to be taking you away from us. Like here? What's in that thing? Why don't you just tell me if you don't want to spend any more time with me? It's not like that, Michelle. I love you. <laughs> You're number one in me, Corra. I wish I had a funny way of showing you. What do you want me to say? You want me to say, you know what? Let's just go get married. Is that what you want? Is that supposed to be some kind of proposal? Yeah. It is. Marry me. Marry me, Mia. Hello everyone, let me introduce you to Ray, my future son-in-law. How did you like the prayer meeting? Honestly, I had a good time. Everyone seemed real, but I'll never come back. Well, God gives us choices, but since you're my future son-in-law, I have to invite you. With all due respect, Ms. Rodriguez, can we not discuss religion? That's okay with you. That's okay, but let me tell you one thing. You will never be happy wherever you go and whatever you do. If you read Psalm 139, it'll tell you that we cannot hide from the Lord. You mean like nowhere to run, nowhere to hide? That's right. Is that it? That's it. So I never have to hear about God again from you, right? Not from me. I've set my peace, and I will never bring it up again. Thank you, Miss Rodriguez. Your brother's on the phone. Hello. 
Hello? It's for you. Yeah. What's the word, Mockingbird? Who found him? Lorna, how you doing, Mia? I'm good. This is Sailor. Nice so, to meet you. So am I. Michelle. Michelle. Hello, how are you doing? I'm doing all right. I've been by your cell several times and you've been asleep and so I didn't want to bother you. Yeah. I can sleep do anything. What's your name? Ramon. I like your name. My name is Nathaniel. Nathaniel Elridge. Would you mind if I prayed with you? Heavenly Father, we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, I ask right now that you would touch Ramon, protect him, Father, and witness to his heart. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. A struggle between good and evil was taking place. A tug of war I felt but could not see. God was fighting for my soul. Ramon, I've got a surprise for you. I want to introduce you to my brother Wilbur. Wilbur, this is Ramon. Hello, Ramon. How you doing, Wilbur? Good. God bless you. This is a, such a pleasure. I've waited a long time for this. I don't know if I told you, but I'm 81 years old, and my brother Wilbur is 85, and he fought in World War I, and he killed a lot of Germans. Wow. So the pleasure is all mine, Wilbur. World War I, huh? Thank you. But for the grace of God, I came home in one piece. And yes, I did kill many of the enemy soldiers. I understand you've killed a few people yourself. Don't believe it. Let's just say, I have a lot to answer God for. There's only one way. And it's in the book of Acts, chapter 16, 31. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. 
Well, thank you, Wilbur. I appreciate that. Thank you, Nathaniel. I didn't know it then, but God came into my heart that day, and I began to experience an emotion foreign to me, remorse. I felt the pain of my victims and the anguish of their mothers. It continued for several weeks while my body was being purged of evil. I now had God in my heart and was one of his soldiers. I exchanged fame, street honor, and respect for everlasting life. George, how's your case going? They're offering me the second degree. You gonna take it? I'm not sure yet. Hey, Mundo, I know you've been speaking a lot about God lately. I wanted to ask you a question. What makes you think there's a God? <sighs> what makes me think there's a God? Let me ask you, George. You think you were created by accident? Or by design? I don't think I'm an accident. You're not. Think about it. If the sun were just a little bit further, or the moon a little bit further, we wouldn't even exist. But God, in his divine nature, his divine love, all-knowing, made us perfect. And if you could imagine, George, that there is a God above, and that he's listening to us right now. No, not if he's God. You know, George, the word of God says in Jeremiah that if you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. That's heavy. God loves you, George. And if you allow him to, he'll change your life just the way he changed mine. Even in this cell, God can touch you. Just allow him to, George. Allow him to. Rachel Roberts reporting from the Kern County Courthouse. Sources have just confirmed alleged Mexican Mafia killers Ramon Mendoza and Edward Rodriguez will be set free. According to the Superior Court judge, the accused were denied a speedy trial and there was no other choice to dismiss the case. Both men will be released in the next few days. I'm Rachel Roberts, back to the station. Hello? Maria. It's Ramon. Hi, Mundo. I heard the good news about you and my brother. Yeah. Is Michelle there? I don't know if anyone's told you yet, but Michelle is engaged now. She had to move on, and I hope you understand. All right. Thank you. Somehow I felt relieved. 
Michelle had the right to pursue a life with someone else, someone who would not burden her with the same heartache and misery attached to me. My name is Gil Avila. This is my partner, Steve Simone. We're DEA agents with the Prison Task Force in Los Angeles, and we understand you want to talk to us. Yeah, I do. You know, we understand that uh, you're going to be getting out in about two weeks. Uh, you beat a rap for murder. So what's in it for you? I'm tired of killing people. And now I want to help put away the men in my world that are doing what I used to do. Including your friends? All of them. All but Sailor. He's my fiance's Garnat. But I'm offering a lot more than that. I'd be willing to work with you undercover against Lion Man. Hey. Yeah, I want to let you know that I'll be headed south of the border mañana. Yeah. I'll be taking Sailor with me. We're going to go visit Alfie. And we're in good standings with the Canales. He would never suspect us. After we beat those murder cases. Yeah. And Alfie will be doing a lot of talking. He's got a big walker. Yeah, yeah. I'll stay in touch. I'll see you soon. All right. Looks like your boy Alfie. He's turned into a killing machine. You taught him everything you know. Charlie. Taught him. You're the one who brought him into our inner circle. Remember that? Yeah. But you turned him from a driver to a pistol little. Remember that? Este vato. Pounding like a little chavalito. Refusing to take us away from the crime scene. That's all you, Essie. That's not me. Why do we do what we do? Emmett business, right? Hit them, finish them quickly, and complete the job, right? Ain't that what you always say? That twisted carnal gets his jolly out of killing. He loves to see the look on their faces right before he pulls the trigger. Then he talks about every damn detail while we're eating. That's bad for the digestion. Like I said, he's your carnal, I said. Not mine. When they were sitting on the hood of his car, smoking a doobie, I eased my way in to grab my 38. But then I remembered, I remembered what he told me when we were in the feds. He said, if you ever see me using again, this is what I can do. So you send them home? I sent that vato to Brazil, that's it. <laughs> hey, and that was the first one when we hit Bruno. I need you to sign this voucher for a thousand dollars. You said two grand. They told you if they had as much information or better than yours, you'd have to share it. Come on. Nobody has that type of information. I brought you proof. Is this what I think it is? 
Sailor gives his regards. He's in U.S. Marshal custody now. No way. Glad to hear that. Happy to hear that. Sailor. <laughs> I'm not having second thoughts about helping and get evil people off the streets. But Joe, he's not just my crime partner. He's like a father with me. I don't know if I can do this. I understand. I know that I've came this far. I hope God has mercy on me and him. Because the judge won't. Thanks for bailing me out, Kana. No problem. Now you're free to circulate without that double of seven crap. So, Dime, ¿qué pasó? You know who I was, Kana? Somebody tipped them off. Who do you think? Only people knew who I was in Redondo Beach with my sister, Chewy, and Dennis. You can eliminate my sis, so I don't know. I knew where you were at the Angel. Oh, I don't worry about you, Conrad. Like my son. Hell, I don't know. Maybe my eyes are playing tricks on me. But I could have sworn they knew who I was when they stopped me. Dude who came up on the driver's side, had his piece out, and his hand was shaking like this. Check this out. I had dinner with Helen, the Bales Bonds lady. She got something for us. That's Bob, her husband. She wants him taken out. Kia heroin, 10 G's, his drug contact, and get this, she'll even throw in his single engine plane. Serio? I give new meaning to taking someone for a ride, you know? <laughs> hey, I wanna always wanted to be a pilot, Connor. Really? <laughs> well, you're on your way, yes sir. <laughs> Listen, here's the deal, Connor. You and I gotta stop doing the dirty work. Find some game youngster on the street. Someone you like and trust, get him to do the hit. Okay. I'll work on it. Can punch out. I still say we should wait. Catch him alone. This Vato's married, I say. He has a wife, a familia. He brought this upon himself. Mundo, he's in the process of moving out. We gotta hit him now. If that's what you bought those one. Poncho had a wife and children, and by going to the home, we risked having eyewitnesses that would need to be taken out. We couldn't let that happen. Besides, that is not what the MS stood for. I made up my mind it would have to be my carnales who would meet their maker. Even if it meant the rest of my life in prison, no children would die on my watch.
Un dos. ¿Qué le tienes que Nada. Right. Vámonos. Shotgun. I rejected this. Let's go. To fulfill my commitment to God, I turned myself in and commenced the arduous task of testifying in court. Are you concerned? Or have you heard anything about your family being placed on this phantom list? Mendoza. Mr. Mendoza, answer the question. Do you even feel that your family's even in danger? The way I see it, Mr. Counselor, and listen to what I'm telling you. The last time I checked, my trigger finger isn't broken. And we all have family. working with law enforcement and serving God in my people attempt to earn his forgiveness. My dearest Ramon, I hope you are still on the path of salvation. My brother Wilbur spoke of you often. Perhaps you two understood each other more than most. Wilbur passed away a couple of days ago on the 4th. The day before he died, he asked me to send you this booklet. With, With love, love and, and admiration. Nathaniel. 